Digifant is a combined fuel injection and ignition management system developed from existing Jetronic and Digijet systems. The main innovation of the Digifan system is the combination of the ignition and fuel injection control units in one box. Further improvements in fuel economy and exhaust emission have also been achieved. This program has been divided into the three component areas that comprise the complete Digifan system. The fuel system, the air system and the electrical system. The function and operation of the main components is shown within each section, together with test procedures and the equipment needed. The fuel system. There are seven main components in the fuel system. The fuel tank, the fuel lift pump, the reservoir and main fuel pump, the fuel filter, the fuel distributor, the fuel pressure regulator, and the fuel injectors. The fuel tank. This is a one-piece plastic non-pressurized tank with a vent valve which is opened when the filler cap is put on. The lift pump. This is inside the fuel tank and supplies the main pump with fuel. It requires a voltage supply of 11.5 volts. Lift pump fuel delivery test. To test the lift pump, you will need the remote control switch supplied for K-Jetronic, a multi-connector kit VAG1594, and a temporary hose. You will also need a second man for this test. First, remove the filler cap. Then, remove the cover to the fuel sender unit. Release the fuel supply pipe and plug it. Next, fit a temporary hose in its place. Connect the remote control switch to the main positive connection of the battery and to the correct wire on this connector using the manufacturer's information. Care should be taken to ensure the correct connections are used. The pump should, when energized, deliver at least 300 milliliters in 10 seconds. Remember, a low battery voltage will give a lower fuel supply. Reservoir and main fuel pump. Situated under the vehicle, this reservoir houses the main fuel pump. This must receive a voltage supply of at least 11.5 volts. Main fuel pump, fuel delivery test. The main fuel pump is checked in the same way as the lift pump. Fit a temporary hose to the return side of the pressure regulator and energize the pump. At least 500 milliliters of fuel should be delivered in 30 seconds. Fuel filter. The fuel filter is found next to the main fuel pump. It contains an arrow for direction of fitting and is fitted by the factory for life. This should never require changing. Fuel distributor. The fuel distributor is a simple one-piece unit housing all four fuel injectors. Fuel is forced through the delivery tube on the left, through a central tube, and then out of the four injectors secured to the outer body. The unused fuel then returns to the reservoir via the pressure regulator. This design achieves a cool, vapor-free supply of fuel to the injectors by keeping the fuel continually moving under pressure, and therefore hot starting is also improved. The fuel pressure regulator. Located on the left-hand end of the fuel distributor, this regulator maintains and regulates pressure within the distributor by reacting to the engine load. When the engine is idling, vacuum in the manifold draws the diaphragm back against the spring pressure, maintaining a system pressure of 2.5 bar and allowing excess fuel to flow back to the tank via the reservoir. When the throttle valve is fully opened, fuel pressure increases to 3 bar due to the manifold pressure rising. 
This allows the spring to apply its full pressure, controlling the return flow of fuel to the reservoir, so supplying the engine with maximum fuel for full load enrichment. Fuel pressure test. Fuel pressure can be checked by connecting a suitable pressure gauge to the test point on the right-hand end of the fuel distributor. Make sure the stopcock on the gauge is closed. When the engine is idling, the pressure should be 2.5 bar. This reading may vary depending on engine size, so check your repair information. When the vacuum hose to the pressure regulator is removed, the reading on the gauge should increase to 3 bar. Holding pressure. With the gauge still in position, switch the engine off. A residual pressure of about 2 bar should be maintained in the system for at least 10 minutes. Any reduction in pressure will indicate a leak of fuel either forward through the pressure regulator or back through the fuel pump. Clamping the blue return hose will indicate which area needs investigation. And don't forget that an injector leak can cause similar symptoms. If more than two droplets of fuel escape from the injector nozzle within one minute, a new injector must be fitted. Fuel injectors. The injectors are of the same basic design as used in the Digijet system. But on the Digifan system, there is only one common earth for all injectors. This is via the control unit. The operation of the injectors depends on engine speed, engine load, air temperature, and coolant temperature. This information is gathered by the various sensors around the engine. Using all this information, the control unit determines the length of time the injectors are open during each revolution. Injector testing. First, remove the intake hose, idle speed stabilization valve, and pressure regulating valve on the engine breather. The complete injector assembly can now be removed. Then fit VAG 1490 and insert the temperature sensor plug into the 15 kilo ohm side of the double adapter. This gives a constant value to the control unit. Put the injectors into the measuring device as used with KJetronic. Connect the king lead of the ignition distributor to earth and operate the starter for a few seconds. A fine spray pattern should be seen on all injectors. This completes the fuel system operation and testing. Electrical test procedures on the fuel system involving the control unit will be covered under the section on the electrical system. The air system. There are four main components in the Digifant air system. The air flow sensor, the air temperature sensor, the throttle valve, and the idle stabilization valve. The airflow sensor. This sensor works in the same way as the one in the Digijet system, and its job is to send information about engine load via the airflow to the control unit. Air entering the manifold first passes through the airflow sensor, containing two blades on one common spindle. The air drawn into the engine forces the blades to rotate a certain distance against a spring, dependent on the pressure of air. The lower blade acts as a damper as it moves into the closed chamber, preventing erratic behavior. The other blade is a sensor, and its movement is registered on a wiper arm or potentiometer, which converts this movement into electrical signals. The control unit receives the signals and increases or decreases the fuel supply to meet engine load. Air temperature sensor. This is also found in the airflow sensor housing and is known as NTC1. Its job is to supply air temperature information to the control unit, which in turn regulates the fuel to air ratio for any given driving condition. The throttle valve switches. 
There are two switches on the throttle valve housing, and between them they perform three functions. Firstly, the idle switch tells the control unit when the throttle valve is closed, which in turn brings in the idle stabilization system during tickover. Secondly, with the engine running at working temperature and above 1500 revolutions per minute with the throttle closed, overrun cutoff occurs. So no more fuel is injected until the throttle is opened again or the engine speed drops below 1500 revolutions per minute. Finally, the full load switch provides the signal for full load enrichment. This happens at full throttle. When this switch closes, it signals the control box to supply extra fuel to the injectors. The idle stabilization valve. This valve works in exactly the same way as the DigiJet system. Its main function is to prevent stalling. But unlike DigiJet, the idle stabilization circuit is within the control unit. The checking of this valve is covered under the basic engine setting section. Basic engine setting. Before moving on to the electrical system, you must check ignition timing, idling speed, and CO content. Ignition timing. First, refer to your correct workshop bulletin. The engine must be at normal operating temperature and the temperature sensor functioning normally. Then connect up the ignition timing and engine speed tester. Start the engine. Pull off the temperature sensor NTC2 and increase speed to 2000 to 2500 RPM and check for a test signal of 4 to 8 degrees before TDC. Lastly, replace NTC2. Prerequisites for idling and CO content. Once again, the engine must be at normal operating temperature and at idling speed. All electrical consumers must be switched off and the fan must not be running during adjustments. First, do a quick check on the throttle valve switch. Disconnect this plug. The ignition timing point and idling speed should change. Now, replace the plug. Finally, check the idle stabilization valve. Switch off the engine. Then turn on the ignition only. The valve should buzz, and you should be able to feel a vibration through the valve. Adjustments for idling and CO content. This engine is coded PB. To start with, insert the CO probe and plug the second exhaust pipe. To adjust the CO content, pull the crankcase breather hose off the pressure regulating valve and plug it. Start the engine and run a tick over for about one minute. Then pull the plug off NTC2 and rev the engine three times above 3000 RPM. The control unit will now adopt the setting mode. You can now adjust the CO and idle speed using these two screws. Reconnect NTC2 and give the engine three more bursts of throttle. And then recheck the values to make sure they remain within the tolerance range. Reseal the CO adjustment screw with a new cap. The electrical system. The heart and brain of the Digifan system is, of course, the control unit. It uses the well-tried memory map system and selects any one of 256 possible reference points to suit current driving conditions. Testing at the control unit connector. 
carry out all the tests using measuring cables from VAG 1594 and multimeter VAG 1526, which is designed to go with the cable set. If the desired value is not achieved at any stage, repair it or replace the component before going any further with the testing. First, with the ignition switched off, remove the main control unit, which is situated in the plenum chamber. This is made easy by removing the complete box and trigger unit by undoing this nut. Let's start then with the main lives and earths to the control box. First, the earth to the control box. Set multimeter 1526 to read ohms on the 2K scale and in the high current position. Place the positive red lead into terminal 13 and the negative black lead to a good known earth. The reading on the meter should be zero. If this is not the case, rectify at once because all the future values stem from this earth connection and if this is faulty, they're all faulty. The live to the control box comes from relay number one in the fuse board. With the multimeter set at the 20 volt scale, a test between the control box connections 13 for earth and 14 live must show battery voltage with the ignition switched on. If not, check for voltage drop using the current flow diagram. Switch off ignition. All the other components can now be checked individually. Voltage supply from starter terminal 50. This informs the control box to energize the fuel pump relay whilst cranking. When the vehicle has started, the fuel pump is energized as normal by pulses from the hall sender. Make sure the vehicle is in neutral and the handbrake on. With a positive lead in terminal 1 and the negative in terminal 13, operate the starter. A minimum of 8 volts should be present. If not, check the battery condition and the connection on the starter and the ignition switch. Injectors. As all the injectors are operated by one common earth pulse and are wired in parallel, all the injectors are tested at once. With the multimeter set to the 200 ohm scale, place the red positive wire in terminal 14 and the black negative wire in terminal 12. You should have a reading of 3.7 to 5 ohms. If you are outside this tolerance, it means that one or more of the injectors are faulty. For example, 7.5 to 10 ohms means that maybe two of the injectors are faulty. So you would test them at the injector main plug and then individually until you located the problem. By the way, each injector should have a resistance value of 15 to 20 ohms. Live ignition pulse to TCI trigger box. Because the switch on and switch off signals are now being supplied from the main brain unit, all we can do at this stage is to check the continuity of the wire from the control unit to the trigger box. Set the multimeter to 2 kilo ohm scale. Bridge terminal 25 on the control box to terminal 6 on the removed plug of the trigger box and check for continuity. A figure of 0 ohms should appear. Coolant temperature sensor. With the multimeter set to the 2 kilo ohm or 20 kilo ohm scale, depending on the engine temperature, check NTC2. With the black negative wire to pin 6, and the red positive wire to pin 10, the amount in ohms on the meter must correspond to the temperature value at the present time by using the graph in the workshop manual. For example, a temperature of 35 degrees centigrade should read 1200 to 1500 ohms on the scale. If you do not get correct values, check at the NTC sensor. If it is still wrong, change it. Throttle valve switches. These, as you've seen, give information to the control box in the idle, part load and full throttle positions. So with the multimeter set to the 2 kilo ohm scale and on the high current scale, 
with the throttle closed, place the red positive wire in pin 11 and the black negative wire in pin 6. The meter should read 0 ohms. Open the throttle slowly and the meter records open circuit or infinity. When the throttle is fully opened, the meter should read 0 ohms again. If the values are not correct, adjust the throttle switch as described in the workshop manual. Experience has shown that many problems with the erratic running of these engines have derived from a badly adjusted idle switch or incorrect information from the NTC sensors. Airflow meter potentiometer. Place the black wire to pin number 6 and the red wire to pin number 17 with the meter set to the 2 kilo ohm scale. A reading of 0.5 to 1 kilo ohms should be recorded. Now change the black lead from pin 6 to pin 21. And by moving the airflow meter sensor plate with a suitable instrument or operating the starter, the resistance value should change. If no values are recorded or differ from the basic setting, change the airflow sensor plate as no adjustments can be made to this unit. NTC-1. This is a very accurate and delicate sensor, so use the graph as we did when we checked the NTC-2 temperature sensor. With the meter on the 20 kilo ohm scale, place the black negative wire to pin 6 and the red positive wire to pin 9. Note the ambient air temperature and the corresponding ohms reading on the scale. They should match. fuel pump and relay. First, it is advisable to check supply voltages on each pump with the consumer working. Using suitable bridge wires made up from VAG 1594, bridge connections 3 and 13. Don't forget to count the blanks. Switch on the ignition. Both fuel pumps must be heard to run audibly. Switch off ignition after this test. Wiring to hall sender. As the main control box supplies a live and an earth to the hall sender in the distributor, it also requires a pulse from the hall sender, so we can only check continuity at this point. A functional check can be carried out later. Using a locally manufactured bridge piece with the meter set to the 2 kilo ohm scale, Remove the plug from the hall sender and bridge all three connections. With the black negative wire to the hall sender pin 6 and the red positive wire to pin 8 live, check for continuity. Then place the red wire to pin 18, that is the pulse connection from the hall sender, and do the same again. All readings should read 0 ohms. The NOC sensor. The NOC sensor is designed to detect and send information back to the main control box, which retards or advances the ignition as necessary. If the NOC sensor is faulty, it will retard ignition timing by 10 degrees across the entire range. To check the wiring to the NOC sensor, use the same bridge piece as in the last test. With the meter still on the 2 kilo ohm scale, Bridge the red positive wire to pin 4 and the black negative wire to pin 5 and check for continuity. Then remove the black wire from pin 5 and place in pin 7 position and check the same again. Idle stabilization wiring and continuity through the valve. This test checks the continuity of the wires the plug connections and the winding in the valve itself in one go. Change the meter to 200 ohm scale. Place the red positive wire in pin 23 and the black negative wire to pin 22. And if everything is in order, a figure to show continuity should appear on the scale. This one is 4.4 ohms, but systems do vary. If no reading is obtained, Check at the component to narrow the cause of the problem. 
So, as you can see, it only takes a few minutes to check all the sensors and wiring from the main plug. This type of systematic checking on any system can save hours of trial and error if done correctly. You've probably noticed that we've missed a few wires out. These supply information to the control box if you have an air conditioner, power steering or lambda probe. If the vehicle you're testing has got any of these items fitted, test them out in the same way, getting the information and test values from the microfiche or a bulletin. The factory is constantly updating the literature and information, so look out for any bulletins that could alter or modify the settings shown in this video. And don't forget that damage can be done to the electronics of any car by the use of fast chargers, electric welding and low bake ovens. By spending a little time watching this program, you can now go back to that problem and, through a logical sequence, locate and repair the fault quickly and easily saving yourself a lot of wasted time and frustration. Here's to success with all your future repairs.